This is the first video in a short series showing you how to create a Mjolnir hammer keyring ready for 3D printing. It's going to take you through the basic stages of the shape as well as some more advanced features such as these uh, decorations on the handle, the shape of the pommel, the keyring and the more advanced features of creating the designs and patterns around the hammer there. In the first video we're going to look at the basic shape only and to get a generic shape itself. So let's get started. We're going to start off with a new design. And before we do anything with our design we are going to save it. It is really good practice to save your work. So we are going to save it and I've got my, mine located in a folder. So I've got a folder for 3D printing and you can see there in my 3D prints I've got a separate folder for Mjolnir. So if I go to my 3D prints folder I've got Mjolnir here and I can go into Mjolnir and you can see the versions I've worked on to prepare for this video and I'll now give this one a name of Mark 3. So this is just the, for me the third version. For you it's most likely going to be the first version unless you're re-attempting this. It's always good to save your work for various different versions of it so you can go back and edit or work on something and you haven't lost anything. I'm going to save it straight away and that is now saved. If I open up my data panel on the side here I can see that there it is there the Mark III and there's no preview because there's nothing to see yet. I'm going to close that off just to give me more space to work on on my screen. I'm going to start off by doing the hammer head. So I'm going to create a sketch and I'm going to sketch on the front plane which is this one here. If you're not sure which plane is which you can click on front up here in your uh, orientation tool and then you're looking at it here and can click. Now what's going to be really important for us is to keep our central axis point or our datum points here in the center because we're going to use those planes to help us with some of our extrusions and features. The first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to draw a rectangle. So my rectangle is going to be approximately 30 high. So I'll draw out a rectangle but then use the numeric keys to type in 30. I'm going to press tab to switch over to the other one and this I want to be 70. And I'm going to press enter. Then I'm going to use my dimension tool and dimension from my center point to my side and I want that to be half of my width so 35 and I'm going to do the same thing from my center point to my top and half of my height 15. That is that part done I'm going to finish my sketch and I'm going to rotate round the shortcut for rotating round hold down the shift button and the middle mouse button and move your mouse and you can rotate your screen you can use the orbit tool down here click on that and then you can move around that way I just find it easier to use the mouse and the shortcut keys if you want to pan like I'm doing here I'm just holding down the middle mouse button and I'm moving the mouse to drag the window around I'm going to press the extrude tool here and I'm going to extrude it I want it, the width to be the same as the height so a total of 30 but I'm only going to press 15 because I'm then going to go onto my panel over here and direction where it says one side I'm going to change that to symmetric this means it will go the same distance both sides happy days I could use the two sides tool and I can give each side a different length if I need to but for this example sym uh, symmetric or symmetry is what we would like and press OK now I've got that part there I'm now going to add some of the shaping to the hammerhead. So I'm going to go to my modify to, uh, options and select chamfer. And I'm going to select each of these edges. I'm going to uh, click on each edge in turn. And I want to make sure I get all of them. Uh, you can click on faces, but as a good practice, you should click on the edges 
in case the face you are clicking on has other dependencies or other parts in it that are going to be affected. And we can now select a distance. Now I can drag the arrow down manually to get to where I want. I think five is a bit much for this design, so I'm going to go for four. So I think that gives me a lot of space to work on the surface for when I get to my designs, enough space to work on these edges here, and it gives a good effect for the design we're going for. And I'm going to press OK. And that gives me the basic shape of my hammerhead. I'm going to hit my home button here to reorientate to back to where I was. So I can now see that part there, and I'm going to twist around and look at the underneath. I'm going to draw on my surface at the bottom of the hammer now. I'm going to right click, I'm going to press create sketch and my page should hopefully reorientate and you can see my center point is smack bang in the center again. I'm now going to draw a circle on that center point and this is going to ensure because I made sure earlier that these distances were equal distance or equal spacing from that center point that this is going to be in the center. I can draw my circle and this is going to be the diameter of my handle. So 10 is what I'm actually going for, but I'll type that in manually as well, just so it's a fixed measurement. And that's that part done. And I'm going to look at it upside down now because I need to extrude that. So I can click on that shape, go to my extrude tool up here, and I can drag that. And I can drag that up as high as I want it. And now this is going to be entirely dependent on how tool you want the handle part for your key ring. I'm going to do mine, I think, let's try it. I think 80 looks good. I'm going to go with 80 for this, this one here. And I'm going to press either enter or press OK over here. And I've got that nice handle there. The next part for us is drawing the pommel and the key ring on the top. The pommel is quite easy. I'm going to right click on that top surface and create a sketch just like we've done before. I'll zoom in a little bit. And is that just like the last time, I'm going to click on this central circle here and I'm going to create a, a circle. Now I think I want this a fair bit wider than the actual handle, but not ridiculous. I don't want it coming all the way out here. So I think 16 should be a good number. We'll go with 16 for now. Again, I'll type that in just so it's fixed. The handy thing about typing them in is if I decide I want to change that, I can double click on it and make it 18 and it adjusts itself. Or I think, you know, I want it smaller. Let's go back to 16 and it adjusts itself. I can finish my sketch. I'm going to pan around and then I'm going to select both that one and by holding control that section there so that whole part is selected I can't just click on one of them and select both of them I have to select them individually by clicking on one then holding control and clicking on the second one I can press my extrude tool and I can extrude them out an alternative way of doing that is pressing the extrude tool and then when it's got profile selected I can select each of these profiles in turn in simple scenarios like this, that works fine. When you've got a lot more complex uh, shaping to work out or complex extrusions with lots of technical and difficult designs, this is when it can get complicated and it's sometimes handy to select them beforehand. I now need to choose a depth to extrude this. I don't want it going too far. I think five is a good measurement for this because we're gonna chamfer those edges before we put the key, key ring or the key ring holder on. So five millimeters is quite good there. And we'll press OK. We are now going to chamfer. So the same tool like we did before. The chamfer tool is here. I'll click on the top edge and the bottom edge. And we need to choose a distance to go in. So I can do it manually. I'm going to go two millimeters because it gives me this nice surface around the outside edge as well. So I've got the angles at the top here and the nice surface here and press OK. I now need to make the keyring holder. So that's the part that's going to loop around the top here. To do that, I am going to actually draw on my central plane. I can't see my central plane because it's hidden here. So if I open up this little 
drop down folder here and make visible I can see my central planes and if I rotate round you can see that this plane here that I've just selected is smack bang in the center of my work and that's where I want to be drawing so I can press my sketch tool and then just like I've done my very first sketch find that now luckily for me that is below here if yours is not for whatever reason you can go in and hover over these and see which one highlights the one you're looking at so for me I know it's my XZ plane I can click on that I'm now drawing on that plane I can now hide these I don't need them anymore and they're away but I'm drawing in the middle of my work here but up, up high or down low actually as I am looking at this upside down so I need a circle I want the circle in the center but I'll draw it quite far up here because I can see how wide I want my circle to be I want it a little bit wider than what it is now this here has me in line with the edge here so I want it a little bit wider than that I might go 14 or let's I want to try 15 I think 15 could look quite good and I know that it's quite far high up here so I'm going to use my dimension tool which is here and I'm going to dimension the center to this line and currently it's 14 I don't want it to be 14 let's try 6 and I've got a nice overlap here now and I want this overlap because I want the two parts to be joined I don't want a whole circle I want part of a circle so 6 looks good I like that I can go back to my circle tool and draw another circle inside and for this I'm going to go 12 I've typed 12 and it, you can see I'm moving my mouse around now the circle stays the same di distance because where I've typed 12 it's become a locked distance I've now got that drawn I can finish my sketch I'm going to rotate around so I'm looking at this in 3D and I'm going to select this area here, this shape and you can see that it overlaps here so it's going to join those two bodies together I'm going to extrude and just like last time I'm going to go do symmetrical so it goes both ways and we might go let's try 1.5 I think 1.5 looks quite good because it doesn't go all the way across it gives us a nice bit of depth and a good bit of thickness uh, we might try two two could be too thick for this design but it could be just right I think two could work we can always change it in a second I'm gonna press OK and we're now gonna add a bit of shaping to this like we've done with the chamfers but we're not gonna use the chamfer tool this time we're gonna use the fillet tool also known as rounds but fillet is the correct term for this I'm going to click on these edges and I'm going to make sure I select all four of them at the same time because we all want all four to be the same and I can start to adjust how far in so there's a limit to how far I can go because it's the thickness of this I can't go any more than half the thickness the distance difference in diameters was three millimeters one was 15 one was 12 that means the difference in radius is half of that so 1.5 the most I can go is half of that again, 0.75. And it gives me a nice round on the edges here. You can see that it gives it a nice shape. And I think that looks quite nice. So we'll stick with that there. Press OK. And I've now got the basic shape of the hammer. We'll end the first video there with the basic shape of a hammer. I'm going to save my work. Press OK. And we've got a basic hammer keyring that is ready to be 3D printed. There's a few more things we can do in the next video, such as adding the decoration to the handle and a few other features. And then in the final video, we're going to look at the decoration to the surfaces and that can be quite tricky and time consuming. We'll also look at adding some renders as well to make it more appealing. Okay, good luck.